All right, so here we have Blue Cat Audio's MB7 mixer. So what is this plugin? What's the purpose of it? Well, as you can see here, it allows us to split up our frequency range, uh, the entire spectrum into you know different uh, different ranges and adjust them independently as you sort of saw there in the beginning. We were able to solo different ranges and uh, raise it, lower the overall volume of just that range. Uh, we can also put plugins on just certain ranges uh, in effect, say just the mid range with a reverb. Obviously, as I'm sure most people know, whenever you put a plugin on an insert in your track, that's going to affect, uh, affect the entire frequency range, everything 20 Hertz to you know 20 K. But what if you want a reverb or a delay on just the upper mids? Well, obviously you can't do that by just putting it, uh, you know, putting it on, uh, on the full track, but you can do that here in the MB7 mixer. Let's go over the interface real quick, just to uh, sort of see uh, how it works. So first up up here, a bunch of presets are included right there. We have opacity for the uh, plugin interface right there. Click the magnifying glass icon and you can change uh, the scale of the plugin. Let's put it back to about 130% or so. We have a preset browser built in right there. Close that down, master bypass right here. Undo and redo, so if you do something, you can undo it and redo it right there. We can hide the graph. We can hide the, uh, the uh, controls right there. Uh, right here, we can show the pre-fader plugin slots, which are right here. So hide or show those. We also have post fader plugins. Just make sure you click this button right here to actually pop those out. You have your master out here. You can also adjust the master right there. We can adjust our crossover frequencies, you know, the range right up here, or you can do it from your knob. You can change your slope. So in general, between 12 and 36 or 48, it's probably pretty good. If, uh, you know, if it's not falling off fast enough, you can always pull it way up high, but you might get some sort of phasing effects like that. Over here, we can show a spectrum, spectrogram. You can show or hide that line, show or hide your crossover points and show or hide your controls right there. You can also do things uh, like load reference curves and show reference curves. We can adjust things directly within the interface as you can see, or of course, you know, with our controls. And then down here we have spread. So if you wanna say tighten up the low end and make it more mono, so it comes down the middle, you can pull that down. If you wanna open it up, you can spread it out the other way. And then we have pan for each of our ranges as, as well. Now on the stereo version, which is what we have here, we can turn this into mono so we can sort of check our phase just by clicking right there. There's also a, what's called the uh, dual version. And in the dual version, as you can see, we can adjust each side separately. As you can see right there, we have two different faders for each side of that stereo track. We can also come over here and switch to mid side mode. And then down here we can do uh, panning the mid, pan the sides uh, down here as, uh, as well. And of course, there is a mono version, which obviously isn't going to have that stereo option uh, right in there. All right, as we saw up top, you can load any of the included plugins. I have one loaded right here, so I can show the plugin by clicking this icon right there. Pull it up right there. We can bypass whatever plugins we have right there. You can load plugins again. Here's the included plugins, a bunch of included uh, effects here. And then you can even load. Uh, VST or VST3 or AU if you're, you know, if you're on Mac. So that's simple. Just select that. It's going to put you into the default location, which you can set right here with your wrench icon. You can, of course, always just navigate your file system and just find whatever you want. I'm going to just grab something sort of at random and open that up. And now we can use that VST directly in our MB7 mixer. And it's only going to affect, in this case, this frequency range right here and that's it. One more thing about our VST plugins, if you don't want to go through, you know, coming in here and then going through your uh, uh, list, we could just open up our file system and I can just drag something in so I can just grab it and just drop it right into a slot and it will go ahead and load up for me that way as well. So come down here to where it says, it says no group, right? So use this uh, drop down. I can say local one, and we'll come over here and say local one. Now when I move this fader, both of those faders are gonna move. 
both of them are going to pan the same, right? So on and so forth. So you can group, you know, different ranges if you're going to sort of adjust them in tandem with uh, with each other. But it gets even better than that. If we have multiple instances of our MB7 mixer, again, this is going to be stereo to stereo, dual to dual, and mono to mono, okay? But say we have multiple instances all across a bunch of tracks, and we sort of want to control these in one interface, we can actually do that. So come down here to your no group. Now we have a global one through eight. So I'll say global one here, and let's just say uh, global three right there. So then over here in this completely separate plugin that's on a completely different track, come down here to where it says no group. And let's put this on global one and we'll put this on global three. So now if I adjust global three over here, it's going to adjust uh, over there as well. And of course, vice versa. So use that local group whenever you wanna group within the same exact instance in the global group if you want to do groupings across separate plugin instances, all right? So why might you use this? Well, one way we can use it, a simple way, is what we saw at the beginning, just sort of using it as, uh, you know, as an EQ. So right now we have uh, six bands. You can take this up to seven bands or take it down to two bands, whatever you, uh, whatever you prefer. But just using it as a simple EQ, I could say solo this band right here. Adjust it up, adjust it down for the overall balance, just like an EQ. Change our crossover ranges. Maybe just that area, and maybe pull some of that out, tighten it, maybe uh, pan it to one side or the other. And to set these controls to their default, I can just right click and that will set them uh, right to the middle. Let's take this off a of solo and uh, let's solo this band and this band and then maybe pan them around or something for a cool sound. All right, so that's just using it as a simple EQ, but of course we can do way more than that. We weren't using any plugins there. Let's come down here to this drum loop right here and make sure that's soloed. Let's grab our drum loop right here. And what I've done here is something uh, that you really couldn't do by just putting the plugins directly on the tracks. Now I'll turn it on. So we've made that much more interesting and the way we did that is we have four bands in this case and we've taken the low end, let's look at the low end here. I bypass those plugins. What we've done is we've put a compressor on the low end and BX subsynth on the low end to generate even more low end. And then up here in our lower mids, we've done something pretty cool. We've put a SPL a Moverb on this to dial in more sort of ambience and reverb in this uh, sort of low mid band. If I turn that off. It's much more dry, pulling in some ambience with that. And then up here, again, we're affecting all of these ranges separately. You know, there's really no way you could do that, you know, again, by default, at least here in Pro Tools, there's really no way you could do that by just putting these, uh, uh, these plugins on their insert, but we can do it here in the MB7 mixer. So up here, this band, we have another compressor, a completely different compressor. So in this way, we're, you can sort of use the MB7 mixer like a multi-band compressor either using the same compressor across all of your bands or even different compressors across your bands. And then just like a multi-band compressor, except this is much more, you know, much more advanced uh, and also much more unique because you can combine different compression colors and different uh, you know, compressor types all in the MB7 mixer here and affect your track much differently than just using you know, one compressor, uh, obviously. So just that range, turn it off. So we're pulling out that snare more right here. And then up here, we have a chorus and a reverb. These two are built-in plugins that we just threw on the top. And also up here on the top, as you can see, we've also uh, raised the overall level. All right. We've also used a little bit of spread on that. So again, to put that all together,
So let's look at this vocal track now. So as you know, if we put a plugin as an insert, as we mentioned up top, it's going to affect the entire frequency range. And that's what's gonna happen here on this vocal. You're all I need, I wish to be. Deep in your love, I can't get enough. Okay, so it sounds good, but it's affecting the entire, the entire spectrum. That may be what you want, but in our case, uh, we don't. Now I'm using Blue Cat's Late Replies, which of course is another plugin uh, you can pick up from them. This, uh, this is a complete delay and reverb workstation with several taps. We have feedback loops. You can actually host VSTs in here as well, uh, VST3, and there's also built-in plugins as you can host them you know, all through here to get some really crazy wild or cool sounds. It also has a built-in ducker, which is always nice to have. And what the ducker does is it, is it ducks that delayed signal. In our case, whenever she's singing, but whatever you, you know, happens to be running through here, it ducks it out of the way whenever there's audio. And once the audio you know, stops playing or there's a space, then the uh, delay comes up. So that, uh, that ducking is built in and we can just dial it in uh, right, uh, right there. So what we've done here with late replies is I went ahead and created a preset because I want to use late replies on just sort of the middle area uh, of the spectrum. So then we'll come down here, same vocal track, and we put the MB7 mixer on this track now. Let me solo that. And down here you can see I have late replies. Now this is the uh, preset that we just heard. So let me just solo that band here in the middle. Yeah. I wish to be deep in your love. I can't get enough. Okay. So we have that going on in this middle band, but then up here we have another blue, uh, blue cat lake late replies on the top band. And this is sort of just more of a basic echo. You hear that? So we have two different, uh, uh, delays going on here on the same exact track, just in different frequency ranges, right? That's pretty cool that you can do that. And then here on the bottom, there's not really a lot of content, but I threw a phaser on there to add some modulation to the low end. You can't really hear it much. The really jack it up, right? It's just giving it some modulation. It's kind of cool once it's all combined. So now, again, if we just hear this track up here with just late replies on it, of course, affecting the entire track, you're all I need, I wish to be Deep in your love, I can't get enough Sounds good, sounds pretty great, actually, but we can make this uh, even more unique by splitting up our frequency ranges here. And now we'll take a listen to this. You're all I need, I wish to be Deep in your love, I can't get enough why don't you run to me? I crave your company. Can't stay away from you. There's nothing I won't do. Right. That, uh, you know, the, the different delay of the top and the delay of the middle. Uh, and also we have some pan in there as well, which sort of spreads these things apart. And you really hear it here towards the end of this phrase. You'll hear as that delay decays, each side is panned, as you can see down here panned just a bit to add some separation and width and it sounds pretty cool as we have those different delay settings on each side do you feel the same you hear it all right so that's another thing that you might uh, want to do with the mb7 mixer there's tons of things uh, that you can do with this but this one here is uh, pretty cool by setting up two different delays or two different reverbs or two different choruses or whatever and modulating, you know, different, your different ranges, uh, with, uh, of course, different, uh, different settings. So what else could we do? Well, another example, this one gets a little bit crazy is guitar. Yes. Guitar. So what we've done here again, we're using, uh, here we're using uh, three bands. We put a bass amp on the low end. You can hear that real quick. Of course, adjust that range however you want. Now up here in sort of the lower mid range, we put the uh, Chandler, which is a pretty cool amp. So it's just solo that. All right. And we also have a delay setting on, uh, on this amp right here as well. Let me pull that back up. We have a delay 300 milliseconds on that one. 
Then up here in the upper band, we have put VH4 and uh, 666 milliseconds for the delay. Just hear that uh, top band now. All right, there's also a bit of a pan right here between our, our top two bands. Again, just to give a bit of spread and width. And then down here for the low end, we're, we're pulling down the spread and making it a little bit more mono. So what we're doing here is using three different amps to affect a single guitar track, but we're not just running them through in serial, right? We're just affecting different frequency ranges with each amp. So that's gonna give us a unique sound that just wouldn't be possible by just throwing this on your insert. So let's hear this all together now. Of course, adjust the level, maybe pull down the top, pull down the middle. Dial in more low end or less low end there. Again, all by our frequency ranges. And of course, we can always adjust those crossovers however uh, we want. Basically just hearing the VH4 now. Now you're basically just hearing the Chandler. Then blend them back together. And what we've done here is we've loaded up the Angle E646VS, which has a really great low end to it. Let me just solo just that. All right, it's got a really nice low end to it. And then over here, for sort of the mids and higher, we have the Diesel Herbert on that. And it's got a really, uh, a really uh, aggressive attack, a very tight uh, sound and feel to it. So let me just solo that. All right, really great sound. But once you put them together, now we can get that really cool and deep and wide low end of the angle with that sort of aggressive attack in that top end and that mid range of the Herbert. And of course, adjust you know the overall balance as uh, as well. So let's play that with both of them uh, together. <laughs> So again, if I pull this way down here, now we're basically just hearing the Herbert. Or pull this way over here, now we're basically just hearing the angle. Then of course, blend them together. Right here at our crossover, I'm using a 12 dB slope. If I use a really sharp slope, it's not gonna sound uh, very good at all. Right, that doesn't, that doesn't sound good at all. It really needs to sort of fade you know, way into the, into those uh, other frequency ranges since we're using two different uh, guitar amps there. So we'll just set our crossover point about here. And now we have, again, our completely unique amp. One, one amp affecting the low end and the other amp affecting the mid range and above. Boom. Okay, so that is your MB7 mixer. Of course, there's a ton more things uh, you could do with this. If you want to check out MB7, head over to uh, bluecataudio.com. That link, of course, will be in the description below. And there's also a uh, demo version if you want to try it out uh, before you purchase it. So that is Blue Cat Audio's MB7 mixer.